Hello, you purist with money. This is who we're talking to. If you're looking for an amp with three channels and MIDI and DI out with IR load and all that stuff, this is not your video. If you're looking for an amp that you play with an EMG loaded metal guitar, this is probably not your video. Still, please go ahead, make yourself a coffee, let this video run and give me some view time because that would be very nice if you supported the channel, even though this is not your product. Now, we're looking at the Tube Workshop Single 6, which is, uh, it, its story just fascinates me. It is inspiring. Now, this is clocking in at 2,800, 2,900 euro for a 112 combo with three knobs. And no effects loop. It's got a switch in the back for impedance. That's it. So this is about as bare bones as you can get for a shit ton of money. And Mario, the guy behind this, the tube workshop man, um, knows that. He knows that what he's created here is something special for the special kind of person, for the bedroom player that wants phenomenal tonnage at lower volumes even though that's a non-master volume amp, so if you want it cranking, it will get, for me, too loud. But, I, you know, I play at home and I usually go through load boxes and stuff, which you are allowed to do. In this case, we're not. I have this amp, I have an SM57 and a Sennheiser MK8. I had an MK4 in front of it and I could not gain it so low that it wasn't distorting. So the MK4 couldn't handle the volume of this amp. So it's not a quiet amp with its six watt. It does get loud. Does it get loud enough for band use? I would say if it's a rockin' band, really only with a mic and some in-ear or some help from other speakers, because realistically, maintaining its beauty and dynamics and headroom against a rockin' drummer, probably not gonna happen. So this is definitely a studio tool, a tool for the more wealthy home player, but when you're looking for the best in tone, in cleans and 
Mid-Games, Edge of Breakup, Pedal Platform, Mario builds the nicest shit on the planet. And what I love is that this is not, you're going to say, what, what, what's it based on? Is it a Dumble? Is it a Marshall Blues Break? Is it JTM, JCM? Is it a Tweed? Is it a, a Deluxe Reverb? All these <clears throat> epic fathers of a lot of amps. Uh, it, it's none of that. And that's what's really cool. This is based on a French PA system from the 1950s from a train station. Oh, train of the platform number seven. Of course, uh, uh, le platform uh, le seven. I don't, I don't know, you know? Uh, so, French, French words. French words, French, French, French words, other French words. You know, that kind of a thing. And back then, they own, I'm almost looking down, they only had tubes. And so he bought one of those French train station PAs from the 50s uh, during lockdown and sent guitars through it and said, this is cool. I can make this into a guitar amp. So this is based on nothing you know. It's very, very sweet in the mids. When it drives, it gets, I mean, it's a non-master volume amp, which means it'll get dense, it'll get a little bit mushy and fizzly. It's not my kind of drive. It's probably, a, it's very vintage sounding. And I like controlled open gain. This gets thicker, thinner. You know, whatever Gibson just released for way too much money it has nothing on this. But it's that kind of tweedy, uh, the amp was never meant to drive kind of a sound. Um, in, so, I, I didn't check, but I'm pretty sure it's got a green back in it. 16 ohm green back. It's called the single six because it is powered by a single 6L6. I have other tubes here and we will test them. I did it when I recorded the track at the beginning. Uh, KT88 was too fat. The differences, especially with a, a single-ended amp like this, when you have a high-gain amp and you're switching tubes in your 6505 Plus, I don't know how much difference there is because a lot of the sound is done in the preamp. Here, it's it's all power amp. And the difference between the KT88 and the EL34 that I tested was there. The 34 was thinner, but a little bit cleaner. Not drive-wise, but it's just more cleaned up. The KT88 had more unrum, as we say in Germany, uh, more uh, more oomph. So we're going to try 6v6, 6L6, which I put in it because that's what it comes with, uh, 34 and KT88. And the uh, great thing is, uh, since it's a single and an amp, you can simply just pull them out, stick them in, done. No biasing, nothing. Six watts comes with a 6L6 and a 6SL7 preamp tube and a GZ34 Gleichrechtsröhre, which I think is a rectifier. It has a tone and a mood knob. The mood knob says mild to wild, and that's pretty much what it does. Weighs 16 kilo and is... I'm going to say it's fucking expensive. Mario knows that. You should know that. But if you want good stuff, that's it. Um, you can also, it's not in here anymore, get the uh, 2864. Is that is that the number? Some number um, that I also reviewed, which has a master volume. But it sounds different. This is sweeter in the mids. I have pedals on the floor right there. So we can put a tube screamer in it or a clon, an archer, and then there's also some reverb and delay. So everything up in the middle is already quite a bit. We're going to go to three o'clock here. And we're marking it, as I said, with a an SM57 and a Sennheiser MK8, which I put on minus 10 dB. Otherwise, it wouldn't, the, the MK4 couldn't handle this amp. <laughs>
This is a Shabbat Lynx. That's what it says on here. It's a neat job. This is the kind of thing you want to pair with this. Gonna go, oh, power, hamburger. At that volume, I mean, now it's already wife coming in saying, Turn it down! It's okay. This can get a little bit too loud. Uh, let's punch on the Turp Screamer. Everything at noon. I would like a little bit more treble. Now the tone knob is not just a high frequency roll off right here. It does roll off the top end while amplifying the low end a bit and here the opposite more treble while attenuating the low end a bit. So this is not just your uh, normal tone knob like you'd have on a guitar. So let's see if we can get more treble here. Yes. Let's see what this does. A little bit more tame and less low end. And here it gets, it does get wilder. And that's with the Troop Screamer and now without, but we crank it up here a bit. Ah! That's what I want, let's try this again. When you look, if you're looking for the cleans, uh, it, it doesn't get it doesn't get more satisfying than that. I have no compression on there, just a little bit of the uh, tape delay and spring reverb from the Galaxy from UA, and I mean. With more wildness comes more compression, I think.
be the, the, the jazz setting right here. If I could play jazz. Dorian. And that turned into blues. Yeah, that works. I'll show you what it sounds like, kind of midzy here, um, when we crank it up. Okay, that is going to be dangerous here. It does get leaner in the bass and therefore actually more manageable. This is everything we have. I'm scared now. Not bedroom level anymore. Ouchie. Hey, come on. Very compressed now. Super compressed but ultra dynamic. Let's punch in the tube screamer. If we do that with the Archer, that's more gain. <laughs> So if you want the single six to scream, you're gonna have to crank it, and that means your neighbors will not be happy. The six watt will break you. So um, we're gonna test this with P90s. This is the McMull Stinger, about the same price as the amp. We're getting into used car territory now. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Master even stacked drives with the Tube Screamer into the Archer works. And I quickly could adjust my input volume and roll off the top end a bit without losing uh, sound. It, it's pretty intuitive to get it right. Of course, it always has its character, but yeah, tweak it to your liking. Now, let's do this. Going to go not touch these two. We're going to get it to crank because the difference between the this is between the tubes. Because the difference between the tubes is are uh, uh, more are uh, is will be more pronounced when we're actually driving said tube. So here we go. I'm going to record a loop at let's say this. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> There we go, we have a loop. Now, gonna change the tube for the loop. Uh, we're gonna go to the KD88. I will need gloves. I lied. I'm a dirty liar. It's a KT66, not KT88. He probably can use KD88s or KD Perry's. I don't know. Uh, yes, he can. Even 77s, if you so choose. And here we go. It should be warm now. <laughs> And now the 6v6. Okay. Dif difficult. Difficult to know if you're hearing them with, you know, some time in between. Also, none of them, except for the 6L6, which isn't really fair, was really warmed up because I just put them in, waited till the sound was there and played. So we could argue that we should have waited five minutes for each tube and blah, blah, blah. <sighs> this is not scientific, people. My gut reaction is that all of them are fine. The sounds are very, very, very subtly different. Uh, I tracked the KT-66 versus a 34 before. 34 before. 4 4 before. 4 before. 4 before. 4 before. 4 before. And um, the difference was the KT-66 clearly was bigger, more low end. The waveform even was uh, different. I could see that. But the 34 had something that the 66 didn't have. So I used the 34 for the track in the beginning. The 6v6 now clearly had a harder attack. The the transients were more aggressive. I again like the 34, that was fine. But the 6v6 and this the KD66 had a size, especially in the in the low end, it just sounded bigger. Now again, these differences are minute and do not warrant aggressively arguing on message boards about tubes and getting all uppity about it, or even buying an EVH again because it now has 34th. Or there's a 6L6 version and a 34 version of the Engel Founders Edition Special Edition. You can hear the differences in a single-ended, high-end, point-to-point, hand-wired, or hand-to-hand, point-wired amplifier 
this is all, I mean, I have to say this, all made in Germany by hand, point to point, no pluggies anywhere, everything is solid connections um, by a total nerd. You can order yourself these amazing sleeves, nicely, nicely padded, um, you know, with the Stitch logo. These are not expensive. I think they're maybe 50 bucks extra or whatever. But get it if you buy one of these amps because you definitely want it protected. So back to the tubes. In an amp like this, if the differences are minute, which they are, I don't think for the final recording they really have a big difference. It's just like you will feel, oh, I'm using KT, blah, blah, blah. I'm using this because this guy used this. It's a thing. And then in an amp like a high gain behemoth like the EVH or uh, a five, six channel behemoth like the Engel Founders Edition, Special Edition, Engel Special Edition, Founders Edition, it, it, I, it's not going to matter, people, okay? Stop discussing this tube versus that tube. This is the vehicle that can really get the differences out. If you can't hear it here, you're not going to hear it anywhere. Um, Let's do them right back to back so you can start discussing this in the comments and telling me which ones you thought were so much superior to the others. I think they all are fine. <laughs> This is for the bare bones, purest tube tone lover that can handle the, I don't have master volume, so it might sometimes get loud, but also at lower volumes. When you're using pedals, you're not going to get it to drive at lower volumes. But when you're using pedals, anything's possible with this thing. And yes, at 28 something, with six watts and three knobs, this is a lot of cheddar to fork over the table for this amp. But it does sound as good as tube amps get. That's it. It, it If you had this channel in like a rev and that was like channel one or something, you would die about the sounds. But I don't think it's possible because parts, high quality, hand to point point to hand something i don't i don't know if it's possible to do this in a multi channel amp i don't think it is if this appeals to you i recommend checking it out toman stocks these so if you're at toman for some other reason you need a pack of strings or something check it out and maybe it goes on your wish list it is highly specialized and can you imagine that this is based on a french PA train station system? They should have played guitar through that shit. Um, please use my links to Toman, Sweetwater, or Andertons. They don't have this amp, but use them anyway. Uh, that really helps me get food on the table. Um, supports the channel, please. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It absolutely does zero to your pocket, does zero to your everyday life to subscribe to the channel. Even if, if you think I'm a total idiot, subscribe to the channel and help a total idiot. Really? Please, because the numbers matter to the brands and uh, you can help someone out without doing anything. And all you got to do is one click. No, no bell. Don't do the bell because then you get, and he's got a new video. You don't want to know about this. Just do the subscription. It costs you nothing and it helps me out. And how much would you have to hate me to not want to help me out? You'd have to help, hate me a lot. You'd have to think I'm like one of the worst people on the planet to not help me out with a single click. Costs nothing. So please be kind, rewind, and click. Um, I have been paid for this video, just to let you know. Um, but that's not why this amp sounds good. Animals at the end.